Christmas. Go on, give me one more. Absolutely fantastic. It's great to see you here in Stanford. This is Carol's on the green. Uh, my name's Simon Wilson. I'm one of the Hope Committee members. In fact, see, at the moment, I'm the chairman. Ain't that good? Oh, come on, you give me a better one than that. I'm the chairman. And um, this year, this was, uh, well, this is my responsibility. So it goes great. Hey, If it doesn't go so well, then um, it's his fault. Okay. So I'd just like to welcome you, it's really great to see you. So, to get us into the Little Weather Festival, I'm going to do this once again, are you ready for a big cheer, okay? Let's see, we go. Stanford, are you ready for Carols on the Green? Yeah! Musicians, are you ready for Carols on the Green? <laughs> what was that? That was terrible! Musicians, are you ready for Carols on the Green? Isn't it? Give a little bit of a round of applause there. It was totally unrehearsed. So, to let us start off this festive season, I think it's only right that we have the Stanford Town Crier. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Are oh, we having a great time here? Yeah? Okay. Hello, uh, he's from Barking. That's what tenor is, isn't it? Oh, right, okay, fine. Right. Let's do it there, sorry. See, so I don't get anybody or anything. Those of you who are hard of hearing, don't worry. Those of you who are not hard of hearing at the moment, I suggest you put your fingers in your ears. children, mums, dads, grandparents, and all those who enjoy this festive season of Christmas Tide. On behalf of the Reverend John Guest and everyone from the Hope Committee and your chairman, of course, Simon, he's your chairman, where is he? Oh, he's over there. <laughs> to join in and enjoy all the carols on the green tonight. So citizens, from the young to the young at heart, this pleasing plethora of phantasmagoria I see before me. Yes, uh, good. <laughs> Gathered here before me on the green. I invite you all in to join in the singing and festive frivolities. Enjoy the children's nativity. And let us all welcome Father Christmas, who has taken time from his busy schedule to be with us when he arrives later this evening. Let us not forget what Christmas is all about. Therefore, let us give thanks and praise for the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and this time of year. Let us take the opportunity to remember those who are less fortunate than ourselves, the sick, the poor, those who suffer, are lonely, hungry, frightened or afraid. We ask you, we ask that you will in, be with the, each and every one of them this night and always. Amen. I'm wishing you one and all a blessed Christmas and a joyous new year. God save the Queen! Oh yay! Oh yay! Oh yay! Well, good evening everybody. Um, I'm Stephen Makeup. I'm your local Member of Parliament. and I've just been asked to say uh, a few words before I do a Bible reading for you. Um, I was asked to talk about memories and my own recolle recollections of Christmas and of carol services and of nativities. Um, now I grew up in a very ordinary family, I was one of three children and we lived in a very ordinary household and I went to an ordinary state school and I did all the ordinary Christmas things. I uh, made Christmas cards and calendars, decorated my bedroom, made paper chains, cut out Christmas trees and stuck stars on them, 
and of course attended the school Christmas carol service where we would crocodile down the high street to the local church to sing a few carols. And when I was cast, I would be in the nativity play. All very normal Christmassy things. And it all helped to build the excitement towards Christmas. But of course, as a child, the excitement mainly revolved around what Santa was going to bring me. Whether it be a new scale electric or a games console, an FX model or a Lego set, perhaps a bike or a skateboard. Of course, I was excited about the food and the chocolates and the family, but it was mainly about the presents. But of course, what I was overlooking as a child was that the greatest gift of all was the gift that God gave to us. He gave us his only son. So while I was excited about the carol service and the singing and singing the wrong words to We Three Kings and enjoying playing an angel in the church nativity, yes, I was an angel, and as I was excited about what was coming, I did not fully appreciate the incredibly significant events that were about to unfold on that cold night in Bethlehem. An event that changed the world and continues to change the world, even now, over 2,000 years later. An event that reached out and touched us all, from the lowest to the highest, from the shepherds on the hillside to the kings who travelled from afar to witness this significant event, as had been foretold. God had given us a gift, a gift of love and of peace and of joy and of hope. The gift of his son, who would live amongst us, tell us of God's great love for us and eventually die for us so that we could be forgiven. And we could... Hear the good news from the prophet Isaiah. Long years ago, in the first millennium of the modern age of planet Earth, God spoke his word, and his word was made flesh. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to the city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she heard this, she was troubled and considered what manner of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. We sing the carol, O come all ye faithful.
And behold, it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered in their hometown. So Joseph left Galilee with his betrothed wife Mary to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. While they were there, she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. sung the first carol very beautifully. Now we sing together, Silent Night. there were in the country shepherds living out in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night and behold the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around about them and they were greatly afraid then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill, towards Ben. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. All those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. 
But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. And the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over the place where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. When they had come into the stable, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. For brothers and sisters, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I'm going to step out of my role of Isaiah for a moment. Drop that silly Middle European accent. I wonder if you've got any memories of nativity plays and carol services. Some of the older ones here, I'm sure, have got memories going back many years. Your children, your grandchildren. Who knows, we may even have some people here who have great grandchildren. My first nativity play was 47 years ago. I was 10 years old. And would you believe in that nativity play, I played the part of the prophet Isaiah. So it's a great pleasure to reprise that role here today. But I wonder as you look at these lovely children gathered here, all portraying for us different characters in the Christmas story. I wonder if you identify with any of these characters in particular. Would you see yourselves, for example, as being like the shepherds? Or maybe like the wise men? Would you see yourselves as being like... Uh, the angels, perhaps. 
or maybe one of the townspeople, one of the passers-by. I wonder who you most would see yourselves like when you look at the Christmas story. And what does this baby lying in a manger mean to you today in December 2012? Stephen began our carol service this afternoon by reminding us of the words of the prophet Isaiah, where chapter 9 begins with the words, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who walked in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shined. This weekend, some of us in this world have been in great darkness. Some of us in this world have passed through the valley of the shadow of death. As we've seen on our television screens, the terrible and distressing sight of families broken hearted in America because children in a school and teachers have been killed. Our hearts go out to those who are grieving, of course, but it reminds us of the present darkness that surrounds us. And even now, natural darkness growing around us here as we stand on the green in Stanfordley Hope reminds us of the darkness that is often in our world. But dear friends, the good news for us is this, that even in the deepest darkness, God has sent us light. That even facing the shadow of death, we can know that Jesus has come to bring light into our worlds. Whoever we are, young or old, we can know that God is with us. Somebody missing. It's missed on my script and I don't know where he's gone. Who's missing from Christmas? Santa! Santa? Who said Santa? Oh, uh, too far. Come back. Santa? Do you reckon he's going to come tonight? It's not. I mean, Santa only comes on December the 25th. So he can't be here tonight. But, but. Hold on, what's that noise? Perhaps, perhaps my wish has come true. Perhaps you never know. I can hear the bells. <gasps> He's coming. He's coming. You go backwards a bit. Perhaps, perhaps Santa Claus could be here. Do you think he's going to come? Do you think he's going to come? Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> come on, Santa. Santa, Santa, Santa. Come, Prince, a bit louder. All join in. We want Santa. We want Santa. We want Santa. We want Santa. I think you have to go louder if you want him to come any faster. We want Santa! We want Santa! Is he coming? Is he coming? 
Does anybody see him yet? Can you see Sansa? Oh wow, here he comes. Sorry Jesus. Here we go, frankincense. A bit of myrrh. Here he comes. Give him a big cheer, everybody. Oh, does he look fantastic? Yeah! Oh, look, he's singing as well. Oh, my goodness me. How's that? Okay, what have we got? And you just need to Okay, we thought, hold it, hey everybody, hey everybody. This is Father Christmas, but we wish, we want to wish you all some Merry Christmas. So after I count to five, I want us all to shout out Merry Christmas, okay? After five. Five, four, three, two, one. Merry Christmas, everybody!